Like I said, now you, I hope you, you're not taking for granted. Last time at the beginning I said uh, inequality proofs are routinely viewed as the hardest kind of induction proof. And that's because the logic is different. It's not like equations where everything's like exactly equal. It's like, it's not quite what I want. So that's the first thing that's challenging about this question. The second thing that's challenging is, what on earth is this guy doing here, right? We're used to induction questions where there's one variable and that variable is, which, which domino are you up to here? Which value of n? But here, they decide to do you a favor and throw in a second variable, okay? Now that's a bit weird, that's a bit weird. To be honest, when I first looked at this question, I just kind of raised my eyebrow at it and I was like, I don't even know what to do with that. And even as I progressed through, it didn't become obvious until a few steps in. Oh, that's why this is important, okay? So what I'm gonna suggest is, we think about the structure of mathematical induction, how it works, and let's just kind of try to step through this without, without you know, worrying about the difference that this makes yet and then see how far we can get. Okay, so we know that there's the same three steps in every induction proof, namely, test, assume, prove. Okay, so let's just begin there, right? Number one, test for the first allowable value, right? Now, people will often look and say, hey, wait, there's two variables, so which is the one that's changing? Now, when you have a look, I think you can sort of logic out, I think it has to be n, that's going forward and forward and forward because it's the one that remains in integer land, right? Which is what induction is really dealing with, okay? Um, like I said, they, n equals one is the most common place to start. So by looking at this particular boundary, I'm like, oh, I think this is the one that's marching forward. And I don't, actually don't think I've ever seen induction proof where n is not the thing that's progressing one by one by one. So I'm gonna test for n equals one, not alpha equals, well, I can't test alpha equals negative one anyway because I can't be equal to that. So, Let's have a go at this. As is my custom for an inequality, I'm gonna start with the right hand side. The right hand side is one plus one alpha. Groundbreaking, okay. Then I look at my left hand side. Again, because I'm trying to show this, don't pull any like working out of this, I'm literally gonna write one plus alpha to the power of one. I'm showing that I can do the substitution. That's one plus alpha, which is sure enough, uh, greater than or equal to my right hand side, which I worked out before. So I'm going to write right hand side, therefore. I've done my base case, happy times. Now I'm going to make my assumption, which again is going to work exactly the same way as for any other induction proof, even with this weirdo guy hanging there. So I'm going to assume that it's true. For n equals k, which looks like this. And now here, come the, uh, here comes the actual work. So now is the proof step. So I'm going to prove for the next value along. What does this look like? Well, instead of all of the n's up here, of which there are two, I'll just replace them with k plus 1. So I'm going to get this. And here's my white whale, here's what I'm going after, okay? Now, you've seen before, we've got lots of different paths through for solving an inequality question. In this case, I think probably the easiest way um, is to just look at this guy, make him our starting point, and then see if I can manipulate him, massage him, to get into this position, okay? So I'm gonna begin there, so by assumption, I'm just gonna state that. And then I think to myself, okay, what must be done to this statement to try and get it close to, uh, whoops, this statement? What is the difference between these two things? Okay, so if I just have a look at both left-hand sides, right? See how there's an extra one plus alpha being multiplied on the left-hand side. Do you notice that? Like that, that k plus one, that one really means one plus alpha times that whole thing, okay? So what I'd like to do is multiply both sides by one plus alpha. But hold on, you have to be careful because alpha isn't just a constant, like we're used to constants appearing inside here, but alpha is not constant, alpha is a variable. This is the thing which sort of weirded us out a little bit, okay? But it's okay, because the thing I want to multiply by is one plus alpha, not alpha. 
So if I have a look at this and I say, well, what is 1 plus alpha? If I add 1 to both sides, it gives me that. So that means that 1 plus alpha is a positive number, and that's okay. I can multiply both sides of this um, inequality by a positive number, even if the positive number is changing. Multiplication by variables is usually dicey because you're like, well, is your variable positive or negative? I don't know which way the inequality is going to face. But because of that, I can multiply by 1 plus alpha. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, 1 plus alpha. I'm going to get k plus 1 over there. And I'm going to multiply through. By the way, um, what we just said here, since... 1 plus alpha is positive. This is exactly the same logic that we apply when you're trying to solve an inequality that involves like a hyperbola. So if you, if you see something like this, fine, okay. You guys know, one of the classic strategi strategies for this is, oh, multiply both sides by, in this case, x plus 1 or scared, which gives me this. Scared. Maybe they are all scared. I'm terrified. Okay, now if it's all squared, the reason I can do this, even though x is variable, is because x plus one, as a, if you square it, is definitely going to be positive. So that's why it doesn't break, any, it doesn't violate any rules, doesn't introduce any cases or anything like that. Okay, so does that make sense? It looks weird that this is here, wrong color, but the reason it's there is precisely so I could do this. Okay, I have my left hand side exactly the way I want it, so I don't need to muck around with him at all. Now I just have to look at this right hand side and this is what I'm trying to get toward, yeah? Let's just expand. I've got 1 plus k alpha, that's my first multiplication, and then I've got alpha plus k alpha squared. Yeah? How's that? That's okay. So when I look at this and compare it to the result I'm getting at, let's write the left hand side first, it's like, oh look, look, there's a 1 already there, thumbs up. What's this? This is, if I take out a factor of alpha, this is k plus 1 alpha. Sweet, right? So I've got the thing I wanted, and then I've got an extra bit. Now, you, you can't, you're still not out of the woods yet, right? Because both k and alpha are variables. So I can't just say, oh, that's going to be positive. I'm not guaranteed that that's positive until I know some things about these things, right? Um, so number one, what type of number, that's a bit naughty, what type of number is k? K is greater than or equal to 1, right? So in other words, the important thing I want about it is that it's positive, okay? So this part is not going to make this whole thing a negative. And then you look at this guy, alpha squared, and for us the important thing is it's a real number, right? If it were not a real number, you could square it and get a negative, but thankfully it's not the area we're in. By the way, this is the entire wording of the whole question. For the extension 2 students, how do you know that alpha is a real number? When you have a look at an inequality such as this, right? The real numbers, and this is now sort of going outside the course, even for extension two students. Real numbers are what we call ordered numbers. You can put real numbers in an order, right? So here's a, a number line, right? And you can say, all right, here's zero. You give me any other number you like, and I can tell you whether it's before or after zero. Like you might say, oh, okay, how about one? Then give me another number. No, seriously, give me another number. Two, 400. Okay, it's very unoriginal. How about like, how about like pi? Or how about root 2? All the real numbers I can place on here and I can say, I can place them in an order. I can arrange them in high order if you like. <coughs> but if you go outside this set, right? So if I said, okay, how about 1 plus i and um, 2 minus 3i or something like that. And I said to you, okay, which one is first? Can you put them in high order? You're like, well, well I don't know. <laughs> like, you can't, there's not like a, a, a single quantity that I'm comparing these, right? It's like, yeah, look, this guy, this is like, well, this is, this is higher, but this is further away. So which one do you say is further along? So just by making an inequality like this, right? Complex numbers don't fit in this world. So anyway, that's just, if you're an extension one, you're like, well, I don't know any other kinds of numbers. That's all the logic I need, right? Let's just remember, but, but, k is greater than or equal to 1, and what about alpha squared? Because that's the other piece of this thing. 
alpha squared is greater than 1, isn't it? Yeah? Because you think about it, like think about what numbers you could put in there. Um, you can't even put in negative 1, right? Uh, but you can put in... Actually, sorry, I take that no, back. You can, right? you can it's get. zero. Because I can have like... Um, I could have like alpha is a negative a half or a half equal. Um, but yeah, I can equal zero because alpha can equal zero. Okay. But the important thing about that is that it's not making this thing smaller. It's going to make it bigger, even if it's just a little bit. Okay. So therefore, here's the way I'm going to write this next line. 1 plus alpha, k plus 1. 1 plus k plus 1. Alpha plus k alpha squared. Now the lovely thing about this, as I've just established, is that this is greater than or equal to, like it's it's bigger again, what I actually want, right? This is like saying 10 plus 5 is bigger than 10, right? It's it's the same thing here plus an extra bit. Okay? So if a is bigger than b is bigger than c, then a would be bigger than C, right? So there's this intermediate guy who I can just take out of there. So therefore, 1 plus alpha to the k plus 1 is bigger than the actual thing I'm after. Yes? Sorry? Wait, which what, what did I say? Oh, sure. Here. Uh, I will say, like that RTP is for me. It's not for the it's not for the marker. Like it's to remind me, hey, this thing, this statement is different from the others that I'm making. It's not something I actually know yet. As opposed to every other thing on the board which I'm treating as true, but that thing I've not yet. Which is why I prove it. Okay. Are you happy with that? So whenever you see, um, have I told you guys about Chekhov's gun before? Have I told you about Chekhov's gun? Oh, is that the play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does this ring a bell? Yeah. Does this, yeah? Oh, okay, there you go. So Chekhov was a Russian, well, yeah, as you can tell. He was a Russian playwright. And he said, his, his, his famous saying was, among many things, if there is a gun hanging on the wall in the first act of your play, it must fire by the third act, right? Like, you don't put something there just... Well, you don't put something there just for the lols, right? It's there for a purpose. Now, if there's an inequality there, if there's some kind of restriction, and it's on the wall in the first act, it has to fire by the third act, right? You, you have to invoke it somewhere. And if you haven't, you know, an easy thing to do would just be to say, oh, uh, I have to get this to be this. So you just multiply through, right? Because that's, that's what I have to do. But if you don't invoke that restriction, you can't do that because you don't know which way that inequality goes. And that's an easy way to, I mean, you know how we were talking about, oh, where, does the, where did my three marks go when there are five things to put? Well, I'd probably say one of the marks should be right there, right? On the in, invoking and, and referring to that inequality, okay?